Dear colleagues, I'm glad to see all of you here uh, online, unfortunately, but nothing doing. Uh, I was given this opportunity and this privilege, privilege to speak about this presentation, which is called The Destruction of the Legend, Contemporary Attitudes of Hormone Resistance of Cancer, Prostate Cancer, Attitudes, it's something about playing the piano, Attitudes, piano, or painting. Uh, well, I am not that creative, but nonetheless, I'll give it a try. In some ways, I will be referring to what Seval Borisovich uh, spoke about in the, his presentation. He mentioned that the founding father of the hormonal therapy was Charles Huggins, who in 1941 published his work, whereby for the first time ever it was demonstrated and proven that the suppression of androgens in the organism of uh, the patient with uh, prostate uh, cancer improves clinical results. This legend uh, and uh, I'm going to destroy the legends now. So that legend uh, uh, the legend about the fact that hormonal therapy is fit for a recipe for um, prostate cancer patients. Uh, uh, following 1941, as far back as 1950s and 60s, clinical trials were made. There were several protocols. Uh, that was uh, Veterans American Urological Group, but one of those trials had demonstrated that, and they had a comparison done of uh, in, uh, instant and tardive uh, 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 prostate cancer when they saw symptoms uh, they were indicating the treatment when they saw pollution. Most of the patients died not out of cancer, not even uh, when they had metastasis, but from other concurrent and diseases, and only 40% from uh, the cancer. So the groups of uh, delayed and instant hormonal therapy were no different. Those patients in the group who had that hormonal treatment uh, in a delayed way, they had less side effects. Of course, these were the old trials, different estrogens were used but, uh, uh, and studied, but uh, later on, as far back as 1980s and 1990s, they had clinical trials about uh, instant and uh, delayed uh, tardive uh, um, hormonal therapy, instant, instant uh, uh, hormonal therapy reduces uh, pathological disorders like fracter, fractures, pathological fractures, compression of the spine, uh, uh, uterus, uh, obstruction and so on, uh, but the obvious advantage of survival at instant uh, uh, hormonal three, uh, treatment were only with uh, the in the patients with uh, uh, prostate uh, cancer without uh, the positive margin. When they early started this hormonal therapy, more often the patients demonstrated traumas of other localizations in that way. So in the group of metastatic processes patients. I mean, there were no big differences in two groups. And the founding father of hormonal therapy in his Nobel Prize winner lecture in 1966 made a very clear stand that hormonal therapy is not efficient in all the patients, period. And sooner or later, one way or the other, it becomes inefficient. Uh, uh, patients become hormone refractory. Uh, Savlod Borisovich demonstrated in a very clear cut way that nowadays major mechanism of the development of hormonal resistance, which we refer to as castration resistance, because we know that this resistance is formed by castration therapy and other uh, forms of suppression of androgen signal could be inefficient. This theory is predominant about 
about androgen receptor in its genes. They are playing the key role. I will not reiterate to what the previous speaker said. So the suppression of production of androgens and inhibition of the function of androgen receptor is an effective method of treatment at the stage of concentration receptor uh, cancer. So we start our therapy typically from Veratronotosamite. I like this picture very much. It shows the key role of androgen receptor, which is like an engine in the uh, car. Uh, they put fuel into it. It's androgens. They start the transmission. Uh, they step on gas, but it's the transmission in the way of the prostate cancer. But it's not all that simple. Not that simple as simple as that, because now. We have very convincing evidence that it's not only signal pathways related to the transmission of the signal of androgen, androgen receptor. Uh, yes, although they are predominant in KA, more than 71% of KAs, there are activations of those signal pathways even at the stage of castration resistant prostate cancer, but other signal pathways as well. Almost 50% of patients showed that they, uh, there is the signal pathway related to pitching gene paid pre K uh, function um, loss, uh, gene loss, mTOR signal pathway, and its suppression. And by Verlomus, uh, it was studied in prostate cancer patients. And at ESMA Congress uh, this year, we're expecting for the uh, results of uh, application of uh, epitosartate uh, drug, uh, its ACT inhibitor. And you can see that in 18%, we observe activation of wind uh, signal pathway, which by the same token can proliferate uh, uh, the tumor process. And 32% of patients is the destruction of gene cell sac sector inhibitor uh, gland. Um, Drugs are studied in patients with prostate cancer. In 32%, there are mutations of genes. In 23% of patients, there are mutations in the genes, uh, recombinations. And I'm here to say that all those genetic uh, disorders and disorders of signal pathways, they are predominantly seen in patients with. Uh, Hemostatic process apart from localized patients with localized or local um, regional processes in DNA reparation uh, by 2.5 fold more frequency. Uh, they are identified in patients with metastasic, metastatic uh, cancer and with positive margin, which increases the number of those mutations. You saw it on the right hand side of the slide. So mindful of the fact that apart from the signal path of androgen, androgen uh, no receptor, other signal pathways are also triggered. Oftentimes, they are related to activation of different growth factors, and here. You can see different experimental trials and clinical trials who uh, identified that many growth factors and receptors for them could uh, be expressed and hyper-expressed in patients with high, street, high castration type of uh, cancer. We know uh, colorectal cancer, stromal uh, cysts, uh, and milk. breast cancers are treated by those drugs and we try to some um, special try to treat uh, prostate patients with this. Uh, Gefitinib, for example, in lung cancer it's used. It uh, indicated some activity, uh, the decrease of PCA, uh, the uh, reduction of pain in 43%, but total survival was no difference from control group. Tasqu Tasquinimod, we were very much hoping uh, that this 
Reduce inhibitor of uh, the protein S1, uh, uh, 108A9 uh, through the suppression of myeloid cells will activate uh, immunity, rep- uh, reduce the immunosuppression, reduces the potency for metastasing uh, stage two uh, phases. Uh, studies show that relapse uh, free survival is twofold higher vis a other group. But unfortunately, when we studied stage three of cancer, it was negative. Although median uh, um, relapse-free survival increased, but uh, the total uh, so, uh, relapse-free uh, survival was even low. Uh, much lower in patients without chemotherapy and toxicity was also adequately high. Cabazantinib was successfully used in patients uh, with metastatic uh, renal uh, and uh, hepatic cancer, but in stage two it shows regression of OC metastasis, but in stage three uh, actually it subsided despite the fact that Relapse free survival increased vis a vis prednisolone treated patients with the previous chemotherapy. Chemazantinib didn't increase total survival and it was not registered, although now they restudy it again in combination with the inhibitors of control points. Uh, inhibitor of the receptor of interdeline AZD4054. It reduces proliferation activity of angiogenesis, pathological migration, and potence on uh, tumor metastasis. But uh, there we go again. Same story. Uh, Stage two shows the advantage, uh, the gain, and survival free survival versus placebo group in uh, cancer resistant group. But when we studied stage three, even uh, all total survival in uh, stage two was better. But then in third one, all three were negative, so uh, this drug is uh, not used nowadays. Bone modifying agents, uh, denosumib, uh, they tried to use it for prophylaxis of bone metastasis of patients with non metastatic uh, uh, castration cancer. For four, within four months, the median of time increased to the development of uh, bone metastasis, but total survival was no different. In 5% of patients, there was necrosis of the mandible. and. Uh, uh, FDA uh, didn't approve this uh, uh, treat, uh, treatment for this type of cancer. Targeted therapy oh, it was lying in shambles, but then another variant of targeted therapy in mutation of genes of reparation of DNA or a newer combination came along. This um, disorder can be observed in 42% at the stage of castration resistant process, but these mutations could be uh, hereditary, terminal, they could be somatic, uh, could be related to the development and investment of the tumor. Seemingly, the incidence of mutations is not very high, but on the whole, as to the population of patients mindful of all those genes and BFC2, first of all, and BRCA1 as well, uh, these mutations are quite uh, prevalent. Uh, and you know that the reparation of two chain ruptures of DNA uh, happens through homological uh, recombination. And if there is the gene mutation of reparation and homological recombination in the cells, uh, the damaged DNA accumulates, so there is instability of the genome and the potential to development and progression of the tumor. And in case of prostate cancer, if we look at the dependence of the frequency of revealing uh, uh, the gene of homological recommendation and 
prevalence of the process and the degree of differentiation and malignancy, the possibility of affecting lymph nodes, you will see that there is a clear association between the revealing of these mutations with poor prognosis, and you can see that they are more frequently recorded in patients with the fourth stage of prostate cancer. So the revealing of these mutations is it has not only the predictive values for administering allopari, but also prognostic value at different stages of the tumoral process. And probably we are coming to assessing these genetic changes from prognostic viewpoint and take them into account when we choose the therapy, not only in case of castration and metastatic process. Uh, the uh, highest uh, prognostic value is the mutation of uh, the gene BRCA2 versus other genes. You can see that the most statistically reliable is the difference in this case. And just look, some professional communities, for instance, NCCN, have already uh, introduced their recommendations concerning uh, the uh, reasonability to determine mutations, not only in patients with metastatic and uh, castration-resistant prostate case, uh, cancer, but uh, a possibility should be considered of uh, considering these mutations in patients with even with a localized cancer of intermediate risk uh, with a high life expectancy of the patient and in patients of young age uh, uh, in which we uh, uh, presume that there is a hereditary char character of these uh, processes, and we also have to determine these mutations. Just look. Clinical recommendations of the health uh, ministry developed by the Russian uh, Society of Oncurologists also involve uh, and recommend genetic testing in terms uh, of the presence of germinal mutations in all men of high and very high risk in case of uh, there is a, a localized metastatic uh, cancer and somatic m uh, mutations will make it possible to uh, get complete uh, results as compared to the uh, germinal. So uh, testing of uh, uh, somatic mutation gene BRC1 and 2 can be recommended for uh, uh, patients with advanced prostate cancer. I have already mentioned that if uh, there are mutations, these two chain breaks of the combination, uh, these uh, two uh, chain breaks will be restored uh, by alternative mechanism, not uh, due to homological recommendation, but due to other mechanism, mechanism. And thus, this cell rather quickly acquires a genome instability and dies. The protein par, as you know, serves for, uh, serves for restoring these uh, uh, single chain breaks, uh, but for that uh, restoration, it should be uh, separated from DNA molecule inhibitors of par uh, protein. Do not make it possible to disconnect uh, from uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, single chain, and there is no effective restoration of DNA molecule, and the result, the tumoral cell dies. Uh, Alloparin drug is today uh, the uh, well-studied uh, PARP inhibitor in prostate cancer in the studies of the first and second phase in, uh, in aberration with adateron. Uh, last year, we received uh, the results of the largest uh, trial profound uh, a study of the third phase that assessed monotherapy with uh, PARP inhibitor Leparib in patients with castration-resistant prostate cancer with mutations of uh, homological recombination genes which have already received the line preceding line of homotherapy by adoroteron or enzalutamide, and it was presumed that the patients have received also could receive 
also chem uh, chemotherapy. The patients were randomized under two groups. We distinguished two large subgroups, patients with the main mutations of genes BRCA1 and 2, ATM, and with other mutations. The main group is group A, and the patients were randomized to getting aloparib or uh, to the doctor's choice, delatamid or adderon, depending on what they received in the first line prior to inclusion into the uh, uh, trial. They were stratified based on whether they received chemotherapy or whether they had measured uh, nodes, uh, measured foci. The primary endpoint was a radiological progression-free survival. In the group, we revealed mutations. The most frequent mutations were BCA1, 2, and the ATM. And uh, the endpoint was frequency of digital uh, response. Total survival's tolerability of the screen comprised of 4,047 uh, patients of them. Genetic testing that made it possible to determine mutations was made for 69 percent of patients. Unfortunately, not for not all the patients, we received a, a lot of uh, tumor specimens, and we not always could determine DNA. And at the sequencing stage, there were some failures. But 70 percent of patients were efficiently tested in terms of mutations, and based on characteristics of the patients, they were randomized and well balanced to the study. The level of PCA on the average was less in aloparib group than in hormone therapy group. And more frequent in hormone therapy group, there were patients with visceral metastasis, though these differences were not quite significant. Please note that 65% and 63% of patients already prior to inclusion received chemotherapy, about 20%, not only docetex cell, but also cabazitex cell. And this shows that this was uh, rather complicated and uh, unfavorable from the prognostic viewpoint uh, group of patients. 33.2% in the group of aloparib is the frequency of objective response. I never expected such high figures in that population of the patients that is an objective uh, uh, response based on resist uh, criteria and just see the risk ratio uh, show, showed the risk of response uh, in cre uh, reduced uh, uh, 20 times in a leprosy group versus hormonal therapy. Median of progression-free uh, survival in a leprosy group increased to fold 7.4 months versus the group in hormonal therapy. 66%. There was a reduction of the risk of progression or death when a leprosy was used annual level of uh, relapse-free survival for patients with aloparib was almost 30 percent. And the data on total survival, overall survival, are not quite mature, but there is a clear trend to increasing overall survival in aloparib group can be traced at the stage of primary analysis along the median. You can see uh, three uh, months is uh, the median of overall survival greater, and in the general codes with rare mutations, there was a trend to increase of overall survival. In addition to BSC1 uh, and 2 uh, and 18 mutations, other mutations were studied. There were less patients in these subgroups, but the clinical advantage of aloparib was quite significant in the patients with mutations of CDK12 and CHECK2 and in mutations of our, uh, family. But the patients were uh, rather few to make any uh, well-balanced conclusions. As to tolerability of the drug, it appeared quite acceptable much better than in the study in which we participated previously where uh, it was used in other in combination. Adverse events were not uh, uh, more frequent uh, in the fourth and uh, third degree versus the patient with homolateral reduction of aloparib dosage was needed for 22 percent of patients, and therapy was discontinued in 16 percent. Death rate and percentage was similar. They uh, relate. Only one patient uh, died. Uh, 
because of the treatment. What adverse events are more specific for Lepirib anemia? As you see, 21.5 percent, and uh, uh, gastrointestinal uh, well uh, problems such as vomiting, nausea, loss of appetite. Uh, weakness and dysthenization uh, were more frequent in Aleparib group in the, uh, the third and fourth degree uh, was uh, less frequent than the group with hormone therapy. Thus, uh, dear colleagues, I am not ready today to destroy the legend that prostate cancer is hormone-dependent uh, uh, tumor, and the main option of therapy uh, remains a uh, hormone uh, to suppress androgen by different ways. But I would like to note that we have more and more data on her molecular heterogeneity of uh, uh, metastatic prostate cancer and the gene disturbances and mutations mutilating of genes which were recording affect different signal pathways and 23 percent include a mutation of genes of the system of DNA reparation. They are more frequent in development of metastatic castration resistant process and in profound study that is the largest clinical trial now which assists to the frequency of revealing these mutations included 4,425 patients and in 27.9 we recorded mutations. So these mutations are successfully revealed using the methodologies that are currently developed. And of course, it was shown clearly that the determination of the status of the gene systems of uh, reparations, homological recommendations can be of great clinical significance. And that profound study is the first major clinical trial which proved, and it was quite successful, the personified uh, targeted therapy for patients with prostate cancer. We have long awaited it. The sound is breaking up. Uh, who worked on solid tumors in oncology? We never had it previously. Now this is an approach using um, inhibitors, aloparib, which really promoted the increase of the frequency of objective response. Uh, and uh, uh, progression of uh, free survival or a trend to increase overall survival. It is well tolerated even in the severe uh, group of patients included in the, the trial. So possibly we today are witnessing the generation of new legion that is personified targeted therapy in patients with prostate cancer. I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.